tonight on 360 Vision, we travel to Israel to find out why evangelical Christians are paying to send Jews back to their homeland. Why is this Jewish administrator so upset? You can't have an inquisition and kill Jews today. So how are you going to catch them? How are you going to overrule them? I'm Marianne Mead Ward. I think the evangelicals are on one epic guilt trip. I'm Noel Richardson. Welcome to 360 Vision. Well, they're startling allegations. Allegations against evangelical Christians. Allegations of a massive and sinister plot to convert Jews. The scenario terrifies some leading Jews in Canada and Israel, and they're doing everything in their power to thwart it. If they fail, they believe it will literally be the death of the Jews. In a special 360 Vision investigation, Saadi Azaman reveals the stakes are high, very high, as high as eternal salvation for both the evangelicals and the Jews. See any missionaries around anywhere? Because you know it happens often at events like this, where there's a large Jewish pedestrian traffic. Missionaries just love to come out here and distribute their proselytizing literature. So we gotta, we gotta be ready for them in case they show up. All right, and we'll see if the favor, if they come, we'll be ready. All right. A Jewish cultural festival in downtown Toronto, but Julius Sis isn't here for the music or the culture. He's here because he's fighting a battle. At stake, his Jewish faith. Julius is an Orthodox Jew, and he's here today to prevent evangelical Christians from trying to convert Jews. We are an organization, Jews for Judaism, that counters missionaries that would specifically want to convert Jews to Christianity. Jesus was asked about, in the New Testament, when is he going to come back? And I'm going to paraphrase it. He's asked, when, 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 when will he come back? And he says, when the Jewish people say, blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. In other words, when the Jewish people recognize that Jesus is Messiah. So there's an inherent uh, understanding amongst many evangelicals that in order for Jesus to return, a great number of Jews have to be back in the land of Israel. And a great number of Jews have to convert to Christianity. Sukkot the Jewish Thanksgiving holiday. But these are not Jews. They're evangelical Christians. For 25 years, they've come from around the world to be here in Jerusalem at this time. And they believe their coming together in the Holy Land is a sign that their Messiah will soon come. But there is a theological battle over the identity of that Messiah. Evangelical Christians believe Jesus will return in a second coming. Orthodox Jews are waiting for their own Messiah. No one knows who that is. But both groups do agree on one thing, that their respective Messiahs will only come once the Jews have returned to Israel. an evangelical Christian church in Bradford, Ontario. The people here pray for the Jews to return to Israel. Thank you, Lord, for the special calling that we have concerning the nation of Israel, the people of Israel, the land of Israel. We teach Christians that they have a responsibility to stand with the Jewish people and support them. and. Um, to help them home and to uh, help them at home through, through projects in Israel. This is one of those projects. John Tweedy's group, Christians for Israel, sends money to help Russian Jews move to Israel. 
This process of returning Jews to the Holy Land is called Aliyah. More than 80,000 Soviet Jews have been moved to Israel in the past eight years. According to this group's video, some are leaving behind poverty and racism. Once in Israel, these people will get transportation, food, shelter, and Hebrew language courses, all courtesy of Christian evangelical groups. We find our motivation, our authority in the scriptures. For example, Isaiah chapter 40, verse 1 says, Comfort ye my people, um, comfort them, says the Lord. So we see that as a command to comfort the people of Israel. Uh, Isaiah 49, verse 22 says, I will lift up my hand as an oath to the Gentiles and set up a standard for the peoples. They shall bring your sons in their arms and your daughters shall be carried on your shoulders. And the ships of Tarshish will come first to bring your sons from afar. So always we will have a biblical reason for the things that we do toward the people of Israel. They're God's chosen people. We as a congregation would be linked. We'd be linked with the house of Israel, with the house of Judah. Father, a prayer bless, for the chosen people. Once enough of those chosen people May are back in Israel, given, the Christian glory, Messiah will come. There are millions of evangelical Father Christians in, in North America who believe this. And like the people here, they're waiting for the second coming of Christ. Clearly, time, the clock is ticking. Uh, yes, the Messiah, I, I believe the Messiah, it's a messianic age where Israel is God's timepiece. We're counting down for me to Armageddon, the coming of the Messiah. On that day, many evangelical Christians believe the Jews will convert to Christianity or die. John Tweedy won't go that far. Others will realize who he was when he comes the second time. But he knows what salvation will look like. I'm not expecting a Messiah other than Jesus of Nazareth, absolutely. Um, why would I deny that he's the Messiah that I expect is coming? Certainly. And I believe that in that day, yes, I believe that there will be a recognition by the Jewish people that he came the first time and the second time. But it's not something I want to impose on them, but it is what I believe personally as a Christian. Jerusalem, the heart of the theological battleground. And this woman is at the forefront of the battle here. This is her city. She's a counselor here, an Orthodox Jew. She doesn't trust John Tweedy's group, Christians for Israel, or any other Christian evangelical group. In our life, in our spiritual life, there is a penetration which was never before. When did you find Christians in Jewish homes, openly coming? We are nice. We are democracy, we've got a democracy here. We don't want any more hatred with no one. We want peace with people, but it's being utilized in the wrong manner. And that is way of conversion. It's not, but that's another story. Why Israel, why Christians support Israel, okay? What we want to do is find out how you feel about Christians for Israel, how you feel about Reverend John Tweedy's group, a Jewish talk show in Toronto. Today, John Tweedy is the guest, and host Zelda Young has a lot of questions. And I have gone on the internet and found out an awful lot of information that is a little scary to me, okay? And I'm sure it will be to our listeners as well. And this is um, by Armstrong Williams. It says, Israel is not just necessary to the return of Christ, it is essential to it. A Jewish state is necessary for the second coming of Jesus. I'm not defending the groups, but I would want to say that most of them would have sincere hearts in the sense that they, they do want to bless the Jewish people. Yes, some very much have a, an agenda of conversion and that we, you know, we know that. We don't I hear it over and over again from the Jewish people. It's asked in one way or another. Um, 
you Christians have a hidden agenda. The first one is you win our, you win our trust and then you try to convert us. In our case, wrong. We have a policy of not proselytizing. Our 25-year history of serving in Israel uh, attests to that. Hi, Elaine. You have a question for Reverend Tweedy or Rochelle? Yes, I just really wanted to thank Reverend Tweedy. Sometimes when we're listening on a Sunday and we hear such um, news of anti-Semitism, things that are going on in Israel, um, and then he comes on and... You know, there's tears in my eyes from what he says, but more of happiness that he is with us. Um, Elaine, thanks for your kind comments. I just said to Zelda before this Like uh, Elaine, this many of the yeah, Jewish callers really this morning feel Jews Reverend worldwide Tweedy. are Tweedy. isolated. I want to bring comfort to the Jewish people. They're they welcome John Tweedy's support. And, um, and so does this former head of B'nai B'rith, one of the most influential Jewish organizations in Canada. I, I have never been given cause to even think that John Tweedy wants me to convert to Christianity. I, th I feel that he respects me as a Jew. And is it worth the risk? Is it worth in the case risk? that somewhere down the line, well, if I'm going to, if I, if we're going to end up with a strong and safe Israel and a future for world Jewry, then absolutely it's worth the risk. Many Christians came to me, and the Rochelle Wilner is not alone. Jews Other Jews agree with her. To partner with God in the fulfillment of these biblical prophecies. This commercial so is a pitch to support Aliyah. It's sponsored by an American organization made up of evangelical Christians and Israel. Jews. And it's endorsed by big name Christian evangelicals. A gift of $700 will help a couple. $1,400 will help a family of four and so on. This dependence is being created by money and big money. Mina Fenton campaigns fiercely against Christian evangelical groups. For several years, she's lobbied some of the most important Orthodox rabbis in Israel. Then, last May, she had a victory. The rabbis issued this edict. It bans Jews from receiving money from Christian evangelical groups. Fenton condemns past and present attempts by Christians to convert Jews. She says, you can't have an inquisition and you can't kill Jews today. So how are you going to catch them? How are you going to overrule them? You are going to overrule them by creating dependence. When a Jewish person has been the beneficiary of this Christian kindness and the Christian is asked by the Jew, why do you do this? Why do you love the Jewish people so much? It's going to be very hard for that Christian not to say it's because of my love for Jesus that I do this for you. And it's going to be even harder for that Christian to resist to share why they love Jesus. Julius Sis knows a lot about Christianity. In 1974 he was an art student in Toronto. He fell in love with a fellow student, an evangelical Christian. She introduced him to Jews who had accepted Jesus. A new Christian church had started that was uh, predominantly founded with Jewish members. It was at this uh, Messianic synagogue, as they preferred to call it, that I was introduced to the gospel in a Jewish way. That powerful Christian gospel, preached in a Jewish setting, overpowered the spotty knowledge Julius Sis had of his own faith. And so while his relationship with the girlfriend didn't last, his love for Christianity only grew, and he finally converted. Now that meant he had to convert others, especially Jews. I did have a great influence on seeing that certain friends of mine came to a belief in Jesus to the extent where they made commitments to Christianity and never left. A silent prayer in the days leading up to Rosh Hashanah, the Jewish New Year. The leather straps around Julius Sissa's arm are a testament of his binding faith. He gave up Christianity after five years. There were too many doubts. He now prays for the Jews who don't know enough about their own faith. I really felt in my conversion experience I was doing the most Jewish thing I could, and that was as a result of the uh, indoctrination by these evangelicals, these missionaries. And I'm, I'm determined to speak out against that, do what I can to help keep Jews Jewish, 
and to ensure that Jewish people won't fall prey to the same phenomenon. I respect your love for God. I respect your love for Israel. And so, back at the Jewish festival, Julius Siss is exasperated. You have to appreciate from our perspective, the Jewish people have a very, very uh, powerful and legitimate claim as to why Today he has heard more about how evangelical Christians want to support Jews, but he doesn't buy it. Julius knows that Christian evangelical love for Jews means something else. Salvation for them, eternal damnation for Jews, unless they convert. But have you ever wondered why Jews don't believe in Christianity? Christians for 360 Vision, I'm Sadia Zaman. No, 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 and you know what? I, 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 I respect Well, what do you think evangelical Christians are up to? Are they trying to convert Jews to bring about the second coming? I'd love to know what you think, but hang on a minute, because I want you to hear what she has to say, our commentator, Marianne Mead Ward. Marianne, what's your take on this? Well, Noel, I noticed that the evangelicals in the piece we saw are not bringing many Jews from North America. Only 5% of immigrants to Israel are from there. The vast majority come from poor countries where there's war, famine, people are killing you because you're Jewish. I think it's an understatement to say that these people are desperate. They'd take help from anyone, including evangelicals trying to convert them. And you know, there'd be an awful lot of pressure to convert. These Christians have gotten you out of a horrible situation. They've helped you, they've given you money, given you resources. Now they're telling you that the Messiah won't come back until you convert. But these people don't know that if they do convert, they lose some of their rights under Israel's law of return. And they may not know that there are plenty of Jewish groups out there who will help them. And they can still keep their faith. You know, if evangelicals really want to help Jewish immigrants, let them write out a check to one of these groups. Converting Jews to bring back the Messiah is kind of like starting a fire to bring on the firefighters. Noel? Now, these groups say that they're not in the business of trying to convert Jews. Uh, Julius Sis and Mina Fenton that we saw in the item uh, don't believe them, and you don't seem to believe them either. No, I don't. That may not be what their primary or official goal, stated goal is, but you don't call yourself an evangelical unless you believe that your primary goal is to make converts. I grew up in that world, and that is what an evangelical is. You are on this earth to make converts, Jews, Gentiles, everybody. So that's always there in the background. But doesn't the Bible require some amount of conversion or for Jews to convert um, in order for there to be the second coming? Well, that's one interpretation. But the Bible also says, and people conveniently ignore this passage, that nobody knows the time or the place when the Messiah will return. So it's not up to us. In fact, plenty of people have tried to predict when the Messiah was coming back, have been wrong, have you know stood on the mountaintop and waited. God's gonna come back when he's good and ready. And nothing that we do is going to control or determine that decision. Well, I'm sure this isn't the last we'll be discussing this, and I'm sure there'll be a lot of people out there who want to get in touch with you. How can they? Well, there's a couple of ways, and please do write and call. Thanks to all of you out there who responded after last week's show. That was great to get the mail and the phone calls. Speaking of which, 1-888-321-2567 is the phone number to reach me, or you can email at 360vision at visiontv.ca. Or you can visit the website. All of the scripts and lots of other good stuff is on our website at www.visiontv.ca. Noel. I'm Noelle Richardson. For all of us here at 360 Vision, thanks for watching. Good night.